You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hello everyone, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. Some of you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you another Let's Play episode of Changeling Tale, Grace's Path. So, the last place we left off, Grace had just flown the coop and has just, I guess, running naked to the lock. <laughs> oh dear, I wonder what'll happen. I, I, my uh, guess is that her transformation will go even further. But anyway, guys, let's jump right back into it. Please sit back and enjoy. Have a cold drink or something warm to eat. And let me entertain you for the next 20 minutes. Alarm chain, you are up. Let's go. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> She's unsteady. I get her as far as the kitchen table before I know I ought to leave. Let me help if I can, if I still can. Grace can't have gone far. I'll find her, bring her home. Please don't think you've let anyone down. Far from it, Marion. Marion's eyes are swollen and puffy. I hate seeing you like this. I also hate not knowing what Gran may be experiencing, but having an eye, but having, but what Grace may be experiencing, but having a good idea of where she's gone off to softens the blow. Marion, I felt much lost over the past few years. Oh, oh, Malcolm, I wasn't thinking. I'm very sorry if all my carrying on has offended you. I know that my sister is acting out as in no way the same kind of strife you've survived. No, no, no apology needed. I simply wanted you to know that, I, that that what seems difficult right now will have closure one day. You're in the thick of it, huh? that's all. Marion looks at me with her doe eyes, tears drying, a tiny smile appearing. Malcolm, your heart is larger than it needs to be. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I can thank Grant for that. Even being gifted a piece of her heart gives me enough strength to endure the worst of days. Stay here, I'll fetch tea. I find the teapot on the stove and start heating the water. I don't mean to make light of the circumstances, but the stability and level-headedness in you is somewhere in your sisters as well. You've seen them at their best, but not to judge and say they're at their worst right now, but... Well, now you've gone and dug a deep hole for yourself, Malcolm. How do I climb out? I understand. Sally forth, eh? Forge on ahead. Hmm. <laughs> Something like that. Settle in and relax, at least for a while. I'll go on the hunt for Miss Grace. The kettle whistles and I prepare Mary in a strong brew. Seeing Mary and Pout gives me flashbacks of when I was upset as a lad. Gran would pour me a hot cup and tuck me in, after, and in under a cozy nest of blankets. Nothing made me feel safer, more at home. I set the tea, I set the teacup before Mary and begin to cover her in quilts, but she pushes them away. Wait, please! You didn't sign up for this, Malcolm. This is my family, my mess to make right. <laughs> Going into the unknowns means relying on others. That's what I'm here for. It's why you came and found me. It won't do you any good to, to go out now. To go out in... Such a state? I can't hold back my laughter. <laughs> I was going to say in the heat of the day, but frankly, I won't disagree with you. Rest, Marion. I'll go look for Grace. She really can't have gone far. <laughs> if she's gone out into the lock, though, I'll be at a disadvantage in getting her to return to dry land. Then an idea crosses my mind. You said Grace was in the bath all day. Has she had anything to eat yet? What? No, I don't believe so. Would it be alright if I pack? Would it be alright if I pack some food for her? Oh, oh, of course. Help yourself. Marion wraps herself into the quilts and appears to quite a bit calmer. I take a cloth-lined basket and start to toss in some breads and cheeses. You'll have better luck if you pack the jar of sardines. They're her favorite snack. <laughs> that sounds like Grace, all right. If the smell isn't enticing, it will at least be unmistakable. As I finish packing the picnic, I spy something in the back of the cupboard and set it in front of Marion. Hmm. Marion blushes as she eyes the bottle of whiskey I place next to her. Either you'll see me later, or you'll see Grace. I'm hoping for the latter, as I think it's, as I think that's what you would prefer. Normally I might disagree, but today, yes, I'd like my sister back. Thank you so much, Malcolm. I just need to take a moment or two to myself. I'll be fine. I know I will. I know you will, too. Marion, Marion is more alert than she seemed just a minute ago. She nods, sips her tea, and winces. Too strong? Too weak. <laughs> she pops open the whiskey and adds a healthy dose to her mug. All right, just find a grace. Send her home. Her eyes meet mine. I need at least one sister back, please. Poor Marion. Hmm. God, Jesse's gone. Outside, the confusion hits hard. Scales? Webbed toes? This is unreal. Is it some sort of ailment? Disease? A skin infection? I hope it's treatable. There's not a doctor for miles. 
Even so, what could an apothecary offer for such a condition? I doubt there's a salve or tincture for treatment of sparkly unicorn scales. Heck, webbed toes aren't all that uncommon either, right? Maybe she just never noticed them, or on her own feet. Perhaps they've grown more pronounced as you get older. I follow the web, the wet patches of grass down to the shoreline. Where else would I even bother to look? Just yesterday, Grace and I were so close, so vulnerable. I check my arms for irritation or collar changes. Everything looks normal, but is it? Am I? I'm all over my options. Grace will want me back at a reasonable hour. Won't be back at a reasonable hour to keep her worries at bay. Gran will want me back. Damn it! I keep getting Gran and Grace mixed up. Hi. I... Why is it that my life has gone from protecting my fellow soldiers to placating the familiar fears of a few women? I do not overthink it, lest I start craving a day's drink, which, quite honestly, I already do. <laughs> oh, you're gonna need more than a few bottles of whiskey to save these girls. As I walk, I try to focus on beating the sun and cool short breeze. On the beating sun and cool short breeze. Anything to distract from the memories creeping back into my mind. Those of a wicked nightmare, of my body contorted, taken from me and sculpted into that of a woodland creature. There's no possible way that could happen to Grace. Not in the waking world. No way, even if the coincidences are there. No, I made it through a war with my sanity intact. I'm not going to lose my marbles over nightmares or the theatrics of my neighbors. And as much as I've enjoyed becoming closer to Grace, I can't help but feel, in a, feel I'm over my head. It's this duty I seem to have taken upon myself unreasonable. I'll have to decide. Once I find her, once I figure out her condition. A flash of blue catches my eye. It's just a common blue tit. There are clusters of those wildflowers by which Hazel is so easily distracted as well. The blue petals remind me of a light injury that I sustained at the as the Ausne. It was the first time I fired my rifle in anger. The in haste or nerves let the guns recoil overcome my grip. That bruise on my shoulder stayed with me for weeks, going from the darkest red and black, mellowing to shades of light bluish purple. The memory of what or whom I shot at is when I've put mental cement halls around, but the bruise, that low level of pain, is one I can think upon with some fondness. It was a sure sign that I would be alright, an injury from which recovery is guaranteed. Whatever Grace has must certainly be a treatable condition. Those iridescent marks, they will heal and fade with time. It will soon be forgotten, as will today. It has to be. I refuse to keep play to keep placing cement walls around so many of my days. Hmm. A little further down the hill, I finally see Grace's blonde head blob head bobbing offshore. She seems to be swimming without a care in the world, as if diving into a cold lock is habit for any and all. There's no sense in stealth. If last time was any indication, she's probably already spotted me. Sure enough, she ducks underwater like a submarine, avoiding detection. I push back the thought that Grace doesn't want this affliction to heal. She wears it like a badge of honor. More than that, she wants more of it. Health risk aside, I sincerely hope that the desire isn't insatiable, as I can't picture intimacy with scales falling off all around us. It's bad enough when I have to clean a perch before dinner. I shudder and approach the shore, waiting for her to resurface down the current. Hmm. Oh lord. Let's see how far this transformation has come, shall we? Waiting, still waiting. Minutes pass, and I begin to worry. How long can that girl hold her breath? Just as I start to fear the worst, I see a small figure breach the water, much, much further down the lock. A new home. Thank goodness, but how did she swim so far? I guess the current, no less. A wave and am ignored. Well, at least I found her. Marion will be relieved. Getting Grace to come out of the water, though, that would be the real struggle. Patiently, I find a soft patch on the shore and pack the food I brought with them from the McLeod kitchen. Popping open the jar of sardines, I realize that the smell will either bring Grace closer or send me packing. Who eats these? I leave the pickled cabbage unopened. There's only so much I can take right now. Instead, I tuck into a, I, I tuck into a few salt crackers that were left behind in the basket. I'm much hungrier now than half, that half the day has passed, and I realize I've yet to sit down to a proper meal. Hopefully whatever is happening to Grace hasn't impacted her appetite. I bite down into a third and fourth cracker and wait. Sure enough, after a time, I feel a pair of eyes on my back. Mm-hmm. Turn around, it's just gonna be... Oh, wow, wow, that is really going. Hungry. My heart thumps harder in my chest once more to see her. Flippers aside, Grace's beauty is immeasurable. Hmm. 
She takes a cracker from me, her wet hair dripping onto my forehead. A pile of sardines goes on top, and she digs into it voraciously. Before I know it, she moves on to the cabbage, then back to the sardines, devouring them whole, one by one. It seems her appetite is indeed impacted by her ailment, only it's boosted, not diminished. I only hope I've brought enough food for both of us. Grace interrupts my thoughts with a, with a full mouth. Malcolm, why did you follow me here? She digs around through the picnic basket. Didn't you bring anything to drink? Everything is so salty. Hey, pass the crackers. You do as I'm told. Your sister is hurt. She told me about Jessie leaving. With her gone and you hiding, well, Rain is devastated. I'm sorry. I truly am. I won't avoid her forever. I have every intention of going home at some point. Today, tomorrow. What would I tell her if I? What would I tell her if you don't return? If I don't return you in one piece? Malcolm, you're being so dramatic. She chews, swallows, and winks. Us McLeod girls must be rubbing off on you. Hmm. <laughs> I laugh, and my body relaxes. We sit in silence, finishing our meal, looking out at the horizon. The sun reflects off the water, and is nearly blinding, but it still we gaze. I look back to Grace. My eyes see her as a shadow. It's in the darkness, her scales are quite visible, glimmering through the black light. It's mesmerizing and haunting. It's also spread over nearly her entire body. I know I have to go home. I can't live out here forever. At least, not yet. Hmm. Do you really think someday you will? That's my dream, Malcolm. To live in the sea, among the waves. Hmm. Sounds awfully far-fetched, Grace. Think about it. I have. And look at me now. I can hold my breath longer, stay warmer. Everything's better. I feel very sorry for Marion and all she's going through right now. But Jessie was going to leave. We all knew as much. Marion was just so unwilling to acknowledge it. Now... Grace pauses and tucks her wet hair behind her ear. My eyes have adjusted and I'm reminded of her delicate features. Well, now Marion has to accept that Jesse was ready to escape this town, and that maybe I will too one day. My heart sinks a little. Part of me feels for Marion's plight, and part of me simply doesn't want her to be deprived of the spirit at last before me. My heart is with both my sisters. There should be with mine as well. If they love me, they want me to be happy. Besides, I'm going through as much as they are. Look at my body. I have been. Marion will survive. She'll live a fuller life with fewer of us to take care of. <laughs> That's quite the assumption. Fine. Father will be home soon. She can take care of him. Grace has gone from sincere, from sincere back to callous very quickly. She's on the defensive and I certainly don't blame her. So, what are we going to do? About drinks. I can get one later, I suppose. Even though Grace is trying to keep things light, I can tell her heart isn't in it. It's not a time for jokes. About your, uh, condition. About you avoiding your sister. It's nothing. It's fine. And I'll be fine, Malcolm. It's something. Maybe for you and Marion. Grace sets her food down and looks at me in earnest. But it's not a problem. I like it. It doesn't hurt and it helps me swim better. The fin gives me ballast. The scales provide me warmth. My new webbed toes aid with movement. Maybe it's a blessing. God works in mysterious ways. That's what the pastor keeps telling us anyway. I freeze. Wait, back up. A f fin? Well, sure. Oh no. Oh. Grace proceeds to turn around and hike up her dress. A thin skin flap floats down her bow or back. I can't help but reach for it. She allows me to stroke the protruding fin. As I do, I notice its rigidity. Its rig I got that. I hate that word. Rigidity. Its ability to move at will, and that it's growing with each touch. Oh Lord, Malcolm, what have you done? What began as a few inches long is now doubled in size. Oh my! It's getting bigger. That's pure magic. It is. She turns her head and plants a kiss on my forehead. Her cavalier attitude is too much. How could she be treating this so nonchalantly? Grace, this is not normal. Are you kidding? This is a dream. The water is home to me. I'm becoming a part of the sea. I love it. Becoming a part of the sea? What do you mean? Isn't it obvious? Grace stops talking to touch her arms. Malcolm, look. It's not dry and red. It's staying scaly. I'm meant to be like this. I just know it. Oh, I've wanted this for so long. 
This is my escape, my destiny. I've willed this to happen. Magic, truly magic. No, it's insanity. You're not a sea creature, you're a woman. This needs to change. You need medical care. Grace turns and pulls her dress back down to cover herself. She proceeds to give me a look that would startle an enemy combatant from five ales off. No, absolutely not. I don't want to go back to the way I was. Please, Malcolm, understand, please. I don't understand, though. None of this is right. She needs help. Grace, you can't possibly think this is safe or healthy. It doesn't matter to me, Malcolm. I've never felt so alive. Let me bask in it a bit longer. My nightmare creeps back into my head. How could she want to become inhuman? When I felt my body transform into a stag, I felt like I was losing all control. She doesn't. Somehow. Alright, so you're right. What if you turned completely into a fish, a mermaid, or a sea monster? Grace, think of the consequences! Instead of shock and horror, Grace's smile is getting bigger. Malcolm, you're being irrational. Can't you see that I'm happy? I'm not burdened at all by this. A mermaid? Why, that would be spectacular. You're just like Marion, worrying over nothing. I would argue that this is not nothing. I share little in common with Marion other than a deep concern for you. You're telling me you care, but do you? Aren't you happy that I'm happy? <laughs> I'm glad that you're taking this so well, yes, but would prefer you treat it with the seriousness that it deserves. I assure you I am. I have always been an outcast, especially in my own house, but now... Grace looks out on the crashing waves. Now that I have a chance to live in my true home, do you think I'd risk losing it all by going back? You are sadly mistaken. Hmm. What about your sisters? What about me? She gives me a sympathetic look, but I can tell her mind is made up. All I've ever wanted is to be left alone. Now more than ever. The words hit me as cold as the waters of the luck. The waters that Grace had kept me warm in just hours ago. I'm still struggling to comprehend what happened between us yesterday. Our intimacy in the grotto may have meant more than either of us can admit. But I thought we had a connection. Yesterday, that was a... it, it was a lark. I disagree. I don't believe that. Neither do you. You believe it was more than a soldier returning from war, taking advantage of a... A sensational opportunity. Grace replies with a patent and smirk. I'm pleased to see her coy side again. Yes, that. I want to mention what Marion told me, about how I could possibly be the only one who understands Grace, but I don't want to break anyone's trust. Your friendship means more to me than I can express, Grace. Having only been back for a few days, I already feel like I can start to readjust with my life again. I hope, well, I hope that doesn't sound too dramatic. No, I've heard dramatic. You're being honest, and that's what I like about you. So, is there... I pause, not knowing how to ask if there will be another grotto visit in our, in our future. Do I even want that? Perhaps we both need some space, at least until she recovers. Spit it out, Malcolm. <laughs> Is there any chance that you'll concede that I mean more to you than the seaweed? Than the seaweed? Yes! Than the open seas? I just don't know, Malcolm. I take her hand in mine, feeling around between her fingers. Sure enough, the webbing has begun, but has begun in between each digit there as well. I'm fearful, not only because I don't know what's happening to her, but because... Grace, I don't want to lose you to the sea. Grace doesn't respond. Instead, she drops my hand and plays with the buttons on the front of her dress. When she looks up, there are tears in her eyes. I'm not yours to lose, Malcolm. My heart drops. You understand her. I believe her. I just need to assure her that I'm not here to control her. Very well. I respect you, Grace. So I will do as you say. But please, please, tell me if things get worse. If you struggle or start to feel ill or have any pain, I need to know that you're safe. Grace is nodding. I hesitate but decide to say something that perhaps I shouldn't. Grace, Marion loves you as a sister. Even as a, even as a mother. I care about you in a very different way. Know that. Hmm. What's going on here? Instead of a confirmation, I receive a hug, a kiss, and a brief silence. Once she doesn't speak, the surf makes her barely audible. Malcolm, I hate to say this to you, but it would be best if you leave me be, just for a while. Tell Marion I'm safe. I'll go home soon. I won't abandon her like Jessie, I assure her. I don't know if I believe you. I don't know if I believe me either. 
But when I leave, I won't do it out of the blue. That I promise. <laughs> I'm holding you to that, Grace. Neither your sister nor I want you to disappear. The now empty jars from our meal clink as I slowly pack up. She eyes the basket and turns to me. Well... I can't tell if the pained look on her face is genuine or in good home or in good humor. I suppose it wouldn't be the end of the world if we had another meal together. Just the two of us, if you want. I do like you, Malcolm. A lot. You do? Which is why you should know. <laughs> what is it? I prefer perch over sardines. <laughs> Aww. Oh, it's so cute! We both laugh and Grace pulls me into an embrace. I'm gonna save it right here, guys. Ah, oh, it was beautiful. Ah, uh, you know these guys, you know these two are gonna get together. I can't wait to see uh, more of her transformations, too. Come on! Give me that scaly goodness. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to the next video. I love you all, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!